So, I'm journalist from Brazil. I work at Veja magazine here. Veja. It, yes. Cool. It trans translate it's like see look. <laughs> Just like yeah. and we have we have a look magazine up here. So yeah. That but, makes... but but here Veja is like more time magazine. Oh, okay. Well then I'm like, honored. Yeah, it's to like be on, time magazine. To be on Brazil's yeah. Time magazine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. So uh, I have some questions to to make to 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 ask to you about uh, the SpaceX launch. Sure. Uh, my first question is: You're a great defender of the flat Earth, and you know about that. But can you concisely explain for me why you came to? How can you explain for me uh, how this theory of flat Earth works in few words? Got it. How did, okay. What, I mean, like what Flat Earth is? Yes. Okay, what, what Flat Earth is. So you are not, science tells you that you're on this little tiny rock that's mm -hmm. covered with a little bit of water and smoke and you're flying through space in a whole bunch of different directions and speeds and that your life means basically nothing. You're an accident. You are uh, just part of the Big Bang. Flat Earth says that none of that is real, that you are living basically in a building, um, a snow globe, a, pa a planetarium uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, no different than a Hollywood soundstage, only much, much, much bigger, kind of like the Truman Show. And it's so big and so complex that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960. Remember, the space programs were created about 1960, the early ones. And when they figured it out in 1960, they just decided to keep it a secret. It is not man-made. We are not here. You know, we had nothing to do with the construction of this place. And But it was built, plain and simple. And it's way easier to understand than the solar system model, also known as the heliocentric model. And so that's that's basically the long and the short of it. Um, the the details inside, uh, the ceiling, everything you see up on the in up on the up above us, the the stars, the the planets, the sun and the moon, are just images in the sky. It's just a giant, very complex, very beautiful clock. That's all it is. That that predates language. And everything on the ground is artificial. I mean, we are living in basically a constructed machine that- So uh, you, you, you believe you, you, you live in a kind of a great television studio with spotlights and you are trapped inside of this in the like, maybe alien intelligence watch us from the space. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, there's two ways to go. You know, if you're going to jump right to the who built it, right? Who, who built this yeah. place? Well, who built this place? Well, yeah. you can only go one of two ways. Um, either a very old, powerful civilization that's, that's way more advanced than us, mm. or the divine, you know, or, mm. or God. But it, really, at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because really, you know, one man's ancient civilization is another man's deity. So I you know, can go either way, although, you know, I, I think all the major religions touch on this at, at one point or another. Uh, at least half of the, by the way, half of the community in the United States, I can't speak for where you guys are, half the community of the United States um, that believe in flat earth are Christians, are hardcore, mm -hmm. hardcore Christians. And they, in, the in Brazil also, you are Christians in Brazil. Gotcha. Also. I, we they they went to the Bible almost immediately and looked at it, you know, went through it with a fine tooth comb, and there was only one verse, literally one verse in the whole whole Bible that even hinted at it being a globe, and that was Isaiah forty twenty two, which is He who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, which is interesting because circle is not globe, it's not ball, it's not sphere, it's a circle, and everything else it leans toward it. everything from the firmament in Genesis to the the earth is fixed and immovable to the story of Joshua holding the sun and the moon in the sky, to the second coming. I mean, it, everything keeps, you know, as long those lines as we're in this fixed and stationary object. And, and that the universe is much more simple than we make it out to be. We're the ones that said, you know, created light years and quasars and supernovas and all this other stuff. 
But, you know, we just gave names to lights in the sky. Beforehand, you know, we used to uh, personify what was up in the sky. It was just the Zodiac. But, but ever since mainstream science and NASA came along, well, that's changed. Sorry, I ramble. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I presume you are a believer. You are a believer now. You are a Christian. Yes, I, I am. But, the Bible. But, but I will say that because I was in the tech field for as long as I was, uh, over 20 years, I fell away from the church. I was not part of the church for a long, long time. And even okay. now, I don't really go to church anymore, but Flat Earth really snapped me back into spirituality. Meaning, if you are living in a building, then it was built. Then it was created by something. And if it was created, well, you're going to have to deal with that. It's, it's very tough. Now, I'm, I, at the same time, I am not going to dismiss the, the other four religious houses, you know, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, and Islam. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but, but I'm not going to say that, that Christianity in this case has got the only answers. Uh, I, I just can't. I can't, I can't do that. Uh, it wouldn't be mm -hmm. fair. I mean, I try to reach a, as, as many people as I can. And I think that every religion has pieces of the same puzzle. Okay, so with the launch of the SpaceX and the images that sent from the space in real time from YouTube, I saw your live streaming. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, for you, it was it's not it's not clear that in fact the 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 the, the planet is round with that images. You can't believe in no, that. No, no. I mean, we how to fight against such evidence? Well, you call it evidence, and we call it theater. <laughs> you know that we've let come on let's face it, it being from the united states we've made a lot of movies over the years and we've made a lot of space movies going on i mean one of our first great space movies one of the greatest space movies of all time was 1968's uh 2001 a space odyssey and that was a year before the apollo you know landed on the moon supposedly and supposedly <laughs> and so ever since then we've been dissecting part of what we do in the, in the flat earth society is look at nasa images and we've been looking at everything from mercury and gemini and and, and the space probes you know voyager and pioneer and and all those guys and we've dice i mean the first thing we looked at was apollo because you know if you're going to look at it the the biggest thing that's what you want to look at because americans apparently were the only ones that went to the moon which makes no sense and we just shredded the, the the things on there, just just destroyed them. And in fact, here I'll I'll show you real quick. Um, and I'm recording the audio for for this if you want it. I don't know if you're recording on your okay. side. Okay, I'm recording only the sound. Not oh, okay, the perfect, perfect. So like here's um here I'll drop this shot in for you. This is oops. Where's my chat box? There's my chat box right there. Uh, but but um, uh, when you're looking for, so you you believe that launch from SpaceX was so a uh, kind of bad uh, theater. It was not good at theater. all. Apollo at least tried to spend some money on it. I mean, come on, that SpaceX launch, the one we we this at we've watched every SpaceX launch, at least the ones that didn't blow up on the pad. And the one that we dissected the most was, of course, the Tesla in space. You know, that red convertible in space. That was the one we liked more than anything. I mean, we tore that thing apart. But the SpaceX launch that was just done just a couple days ago that was barely even, what, 15 minutes? 15 minutes of footage, and that was it. They cut back to studio, and then it was just color commentary. Um, they didn't even, and they, of course, they cut out the part where, you know, the, the, the booster supposedly landing on the barge. Love that. It was like, okay, and technical difficulties, and there it is on the barge. Like, really? You weren't even going to spend the money for that? Um, <laughs> the two angles, which I showed you, which were, which were great, yes. um, two different camera angles. One showed a curvature, the other showed no curvature. So which one is authentic? One of, they both can't be right. And so you, you and other science people would be like, oh, well, it's got to be the one with the curvature. It's like, well, then what was the other thing? What was that? And it's like, well, it obviously was a lens that didn't show a curvature. It's like, what? So the, the picture I just showed you, for example, that's just a routine shot from Apollo 12. You want to know why we don't believe SpaceX? Why we don't even, we don't even take SpaceX seriously is because of that image right there. That image right there, when you stare at it, that's just a routine image from uh, Apollo 12, late 1969, right? And there are so many things wrong with this picture 
the I'll just give you my top four. Ready? I won't even we won't even talk about why there's no stars in the background. I won't even talk about that because people just say, well, it's camera settings, it's exposure settings. Fine, who cares? Uh, let's see. Shadows. And again, most the general public doesn't aren't taught these things. And that is if you have one light source, right? It's very, very far yeah. away. The shadows can only go in what? One direction, right? So the sun's up here, the shadow all the trees, the shadows go in one direction. How many shadows directions do you see here? Four. Why? Because the light source is really, really close. What's well, like, how can that be? Well, because you're not actually outside. You're actually in a studio. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is you see footprints all over the place. And yet that giant nozzle underneath the spacecraft uh, should have generated 10,000 pounds of thrust. And there isn't a single mark underneath it. It was like it was just set there. I mean, 10,000 pounds of thrust, there should be this massive blast burn down there. You, there should be no ash. That thing should be sitting on rock. Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can zoom in, by the way. This is a high def image. The, um, but the... but you 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 know about the mirror that that uh, astronauts live in the moon that yeah. you can point in and with lasers and uh -huh. see that the light come back. You supposedly know supposedly bouncing the photons back. Yeah. 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 Y again, you're told this. You don't actually see it. You just told this. But, it's like, but you can do this in your home. You point in the laser to the moon and the, 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 the light comes back. No, no, no. Good Lord, no. Even even <laughs> Mythbusters claims that they only got like a few photons back. And even then, I don't believe it. Why don't I believe it? Because of that dish in the center of that photograph. That dish is a VHF transmitter from 1969. It has a range of 50 miles. If you're lucky, that's maybe Morse code, 50 miles. And that thing supposedly was pumping out 10 frames of color video a second, two-way communication. They did it perfectly without any static whatsoever with battery power. And they put, they went a half, I'm sorry, quarter of a million miles through the Van Allen radiation belts. What did they even line it up with? It was just, it's just a stage prop. That's all it is. Everything about this photo is wrong. If you zoom in on that craft, it is just tin foil and shower curtain rods. And that thing supposedly went a quarter million miles to the moon. Oh my God. The spacesuits don't make any sense. They defy thermodynamics. The spacesuits, pressure versus non-pressure. It is law of thermodynamics. And that if you blow up a balloon, you let go of it with your finger, it's always going to fly away, right? The, the more you blow up the balloon, the tighter it gets. You cannot bend that balloon. The, they're using soft suits. They're in a vacuum chamber, supposedly, and yet those soft suits are perfectly bendable. Their arms and knees and everything work absolutely fine. It defies everything that we know about physics and what they say about the moon. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I ramble. What else? No you problem. Got? But, but uh, before the SpaceX launches, the flat earthers say that uh, the, that's what government trying to convince us that the, 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 the land is round and stuff like that. Now you have a, a private company that should take humans to the space and broadcast like this. How can you doubt, doubt about that? Oh, because, okay, a couple things. First, you got to remember the United States government that militarized space, that they and the yeah. Soviet Union, they did that for a very, very long time. I mean, decades. And then finally, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and uh, Blue Horizon came along. Yes. Uh, Virgin Galactic yes. and Blue Horizon, they are not doing anything. And SpaceX is con absolutely controlled by NASA. They launch from the NASA pads down in Florida, you know, in the, um, uh, the, at the Kennedy Space Center. I'm sorry, Cape Canaveral. And they were crewed by NASA astronauts, you know, ex-shuttle NASA. <laughs> The, everything about that thing, with the exception of the control room, was NASA in the beginning. So, no, SpaceX has been compromised since day one. I mean, think about it. If you're going to start up your own private space company, if you all of a sudden want to start up one, and you're going to collect resumes, where do you think those resumes are coming from? They're all going to be ex-military, almost all of them, because they're all... And, and by the way, I've, I've got to throw this out there. NASA is absolutely military. They, people say, oh, no, no, you know, it's Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. No, 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 no. NASA is in there. They are Department of Defense. Granted, they don't carry guns. They wear white uniforms and they smile for the camera. But that's it. Other than that, they are absolutely, they are built on military technology. For God's sakes, where do you think we got the rockets from? The rockets are just nuclear missiles with different payloads. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, uh, but... Uh, uh... I saw that that documentary in the Netflix. Yep. About you. Yep. 
And uh, that sometimes that say that they try to hide the truth. Who are they? That's the big question. It's the worldwide conspiracy that right. happens. Um, that that is, by the way, a big question. I, I think I talked about it briefly in the documentary. I can't remember how much they edited out though. Which is, if you ask any conspiracy person what the top ten groups are out there. You know, we've all heard of them, right? The Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the Vatican, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilaterals, blah, blah, blah. There's so many of them. And you ask them, it's like, well, which one's at the top? No mm -hmm. one knows for sure. But that's that's the key. In fact, I, I think I talked about it on a National Geographic thing. And that is the first rule of power. Literally, the first rule of power is stay hidden. And is the, mm -hmm. is the curse and the blessing of being the most being the puppet masters. And that is you can't be the puppet masters and the puppet at the same time because you can't. The, the rule is, is you can't put yourself in the spotlight because once they know who you are, you can be overthrown. That is it's an old, old quote, which is never put yourself in a position to be overthrown. So who mm -hmm. are they? I don't know. People that don't worry about money ever. <laughs> people that could basically sink an economy. I mean, people bigger than the royals. Um, you know, if, if it was me, would it be partially tied to the Vatican? Yeah, maybe. Maybe the Rothschilds because they they cornered the, the entire UK stock market at one point. Uh, people, I mean, it's a small, small group. Let's put it that way. But they're they're very, I don't, and by the way, I don't think it's new money. So people say, oh, it's Bill Gates and it's Mark Cuban and it's Elon Musk. It's like, no, that's new money. Yeah, they're billionaires. But they've only had their money for a very, very short amount of time in the grand scheme of things. These are people that have had money for centuries. So. Okay. Oh, so I, I left he, out the Masons. He, oh, my God. How did I leave out the Masons? Sorry. <laughs> the Masons, yeah. yes. The Masons also. Uh, but uh, it's, it, as, uh, all you're saying is like um, George Orwell in 1984 book like this. Yeah. You have a, a, great, a great big brother looking for us yeah it's like oh that. um by the way the, the george orwell yeah big brother well i do believe in big brother and i do think his book was ahead of its time i mean way i mean considering how many years ago rears it was written before the actual i got to read it in high school i was in high school in 1984 and it was required mm -hmm. reading um what i think is interesting here i'll give you a quote i come right back at you george orwell said a wonderful quote about about flat earth and he was not a flat earther he said, he goes, it's interesting. He wrote this in 1946, and it's in my description box of every video I make, which is, he goes, you could go out to anyone on the street and you could ask them how they know the earth is a globe. And the first mm -hmm. response will always be, what are you talking about? Of course, it, we know it's a globe. It's known. It's a known thing. And he goes, really? How do you know? And as soon as you ask that question, they start spinning and they, and because they realize it's like, you don't know. And remember, this was 1946. Right? How did everybody in the world know it was a globe? NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. How did everyone in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe? If you can't get high enough to look at it, how do you know? It's not that you know, you were told. And that's the big thing. We believe, I'm not blaming people necessarily. Look, we, you have to trust in something. We believe most of what the media tells us and whatever science tells us, we absolutely believe it. If you wear a white lab coat and you say, ah, this is this, they, people will say, oh, well, he's smarter than me. It's got to be that. And even though science is wrong a lot and they don't ever apologize for it. So. Uh, but um, is, you don't get tired of explaining to people, to all the people all around the world, they all everybody, that everybody is wrong that the earth is flat and everybody in the world is wrong. You don't get tired to explain this for everybody all the time. No, I, I don't get tired explaining it because I knew how long it took me to, to go through it. Um, I look, I was, I, I was one of the weird people. Um, I collected maps and I used to collect antique globes. I'm not kidding. I had a bunch of globes in my house. And mm -hmm. so it took me nine months to finally get this through my head and then finally in 2015 that's when i said okay uh i give up i, I i'm not going to try to prove the globe anymore i'm going to go the other way i'm going to make a series of videos and put it out there and say okay here's why i don't think it's a globe show me where i'm wrong and i would have thought you know like you were saying people were just going to come at me and it's like oh you're an idiot you're a moron no 
No, I had so many different people and I had a whole bunch of subject matter experts. The people that surprised me were the subject matter experts. Every branch of the military, pilots, air traffic controllers, engineers, uh, you name it, they came at me. The only people that didn't come at me was NASA. And they came in and said, you know what? That's not that crazy. Here's what I'm seeing. And they threw me all sorts of fun stuff. Like every weapon, every long range weapon that's ever fired doesn't take into account the spin of the earth, even though it should. Um, the engineers that came back said, yeah, the space station shouldn't, shouldn't even exist. The pressure differences, that thing should, you know, not with aluminum and plastic. There's a reason why we make submarines out of heavy steel. Um, engineers that come back and, and say, oh, yeah, long distance wise, we can see way further than we should and so on and so on. Uh, it just, it's just amazing that, so yeah, they convinced me. They convinced me more than I already did, already was convinced. And but, so after the first six months, I didn't have any doubts. But no, I don't get tired of it. Okay. Come back to the SpaceX shuttle uh, yeah. launch. Uh, excuse me. Come back to SpaceX launch. Um, we saw that the the rocket come from the, the, the bottle to the, to the, the, the sky. It's, it's also a lie. It's also, it's also not true that the rocket come from the, the, the bottom, from, from the, the Florida to, this, to the, the sky? No, no, no. The rockets are, from what I can tell, the rockets are real. And you can look this up. Mm -hmm. These are not hard to find. All you have to do is look up rocket trajectory time lapse. And the rockets always do the same thing. They go up for a little while, and then they just go sideways. They go, you know, these just go sideways. Because the, 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 the Earth is round. Yeah, no. not, not not if you're trying to get escape velocity. Not if you're trying to break. I know where you're going, but no, no. You remember, you're supposed to be going up. And this thing all of a sudden starts looking like an airplane. Once it gets out past visual range, it looks like an airplane. It's like, why is it going that way? And and every we've, we've had recordings of people in the stands, you know, that are at these rocket launches. It's like, why is it going over there? It's going over off into the ocean. That's all it's doing. I mean, it is it is it is great theater. I will give you. I will give them that. But no, the rockets are real. The people that build the rockets are real. Uh, the people that are, you know, they, they don't even know what they're doing. It's like they're building real they, rockets. They saw the rockets come to the sky, but we can't see in the in the space the, the rockets. Nope. That part in the that's, space. That's, part, that's, the, that's the sneakiest that's part. Bullshit. Yeah, it's called telemetry. So what happens is when a rocket gets out of visual range, which is why the only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys, and the guys that are looking at the data, because people are, you know, the guy's like, okay, where is the rocket now? Because we can't see it. And you say, oh, well, the rocket's, you know, at this particular point. Well, how do you know it's that particular point? Well, because our numbers say so. Well, you can make those numbers anything you want. <laughs> and, you know, the rocket, you just send off the rocket into the ocean. And then you can say, oh, no, no, that rocket went up here. And so all you have to do is change the telemetry. So 99% of the people that work in the space programs don't know anything. They do their jobs. You know, it hires a whole bunch of people. You want to make the fuel system? Great. You want to polish the capsules? Great. You know, even the astronauts don't know exactly what's happening because they're not there. They're not on top of the rockets. You don't, you don't put them on top of the rockets for a very good reason. One, if the rocket explodes, you don't, yeah. <laughs> you don't want them there. I mean, literally the rocket is just a pile of explosives. That's all it is. And But, but what do you say, say, what do you say to the family of the astronauts that die in the space shuttle or oh, in another yes, accident? The space yeah, 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 the Challenger astronauts. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can find that really because fast. Because they die they, 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 in the explosion. Did they the, die? This is true. Uh, no, family. no, no, not at all. No, nobody. You don't believe they don't die? No, because there, the was, no, there was nobody there in the first place. Um, here, so, let me see if I can find it for you. There's a wonderful shot. It's under my request thing, my photos. Ah, one sec. I'll find it. The, um, but there's, but yeah, six. In fact, we found six out of the seven of them. We even went, went up to one of their guys' houses. We, we were article. We went to one of these astronauts. He's still alive. You know, six or seven of them are still walking around. They're either professors or whatever. And we went to his house and he even, it was it's so interesting when they were talking to him because he said, yeah, I know I looked a lot like that guy when I was yes. younger. And, and, but the thing he never, never at once during say, I'll send you the slide here in just a second. At no point did he ever say what I was doing and what he should have said was, this is your t standard alibi, which is what he was doing in 1986. He should have said that he never did. But ba based on that, we can believe that uh, Elvis is alive. Michael Jackson is alive. 
No, no, because you don't see him wa them walking around. But here, take a look at this. Here. Mm. We'll take a look at this shot right here. I didn't come up with this. Other people did. And two of mm. these guys, remember this, so this, this, this is from STS-51, the Challenger, right? The, mm -hmm. uh, the seven people there. Now, what's interesting to the bottom left-hand guys, because they have very distinctive fa faces. You know, in Hollywood, it's tough to make actors look older than they are. It's one of those things we've never gotten good at. But when you look at, like, the lower left guy with his white hair, oh, my God, he's perfect. And again, we but, went... But when you, you talk like that, they don't die. It's not disrespect of the of the family. Oh, no, no. I mean, if the family the if, if the families were, were upset because they think they died, hey, I'm sorry. And, but you got to remember that we do this in the military all the time, which is mm -hmm. when we have spies or we have operatives that die, we tell the fam or don't die. We tell the families, sorry, this person's this person's, you know, was killed in action and they aren't. They're relocated. They put in a witness relocation. So it happens mm -hmm. in the military all the time. And remember, these guys are military. Also, I've got to mention about this photo. Did you notice the helmets they're carrying? I thought this was a fluke. I thought these were just display helmets for the photo because they look like motorcycle helmets, right? They don't look like space mm -hmm. helmets. No, these are the helmets they actually used when they went up there. They weren't pressurized at all. We have footage of these guys wearing these stupid helmets and they're connected to suits and you can see their necks. And they're wearing short sleeve shirts, no gloves. It's like, what? Because nobody no, in our country, nobody paid attention to the space missions in the 80s and 90s. So especially this one, it was it was brilliant. But no, no, I'm, I'm again, no disrespect to the families. Hey, if you cried over it, sorry to hear that. But no, none of these guys are dead. Except maybe okay. the except maybe the one guy in the back, because I think he died of old age. Um, if Elon Musk invited you to get on a rocket to see the round Earth in space, can you change your idea? Oh, yeah. If, 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 if they'd invite me, but they won't, because the first thing they <laughs> no, would do... No, hypothetically. hypothetically oh, if, 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 potentially, you're sure. If they asked me to go, absolutely, I would go, but I know what would happen. They would set me down, and they would give me a, a non-disclosure agreement, and they'd say, oh, yeah, by the way, I have to sign this, and the non-disclosure agreement then now uh, applies you to treason charges, <laughs> if you say anything. <laughs> you got to remember, treason is different from normal court. Treason means, you know, they lock you in a room and throw away the room. It, you don't you don't get to come out of that. But no, absolutely. But there's two other things I would do. People say, well, what, what would it take for you to, to... I don't even have to go up in space to be convinced. Put a camera, put a 4K camera on a rocket, point it down towards the, towards the Earth, put it on a capsule, launch the rocket, do not hit pause, do not hit stop, let that film roll, and let, me, they, see, let me see the Earth. They don't do up. this with this launch? They don't do this with the lines. No, nope, it's, ne it's never happened. We have never seen the globe just all of a sudden form. You know, let, let like the SpaceX with the Tesla in space. You know, supposedly that car was going to Mars, whatever. You know, that it had three HD cameras on it. Why didn't he leave the cameras running when he when he sent it off? It was like, oh, that's the end of the broadcast. Turn it off. It's like, why would you turn it off? Why would you turn off the broadcast? Because it's never happened in the history of space travel. Germ Gemini, Mercury, Apollo, Voyager, no no spacecraft has ever left the Earth and let the cameras run to where it forms a globe. You know, like if you're walking back from a basketball, if you're really, really close, and it turns into a globe. It's never happened in the history of space travel. Why not? Seems a little weird, doesn't it? So what do you make you change your mind? Oh, um, two things. Either a 4K camera on 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 some mounted on something and send it off past Earth orbit. That's, that's the first thing I would do. Now, that's kind of expensive, and who knows who could get that authorized. If that would happen, great. Like, let us look it's at not, it. It's not much expensive for a rocket. It's more, it's, it's more cheaper than a rocket to put a 4K camera. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, you just, just attach a 4K camera. I'm just a little surprised it's never happened. But if you want to do, if you fine, if you don't want to do a 4K camera on a rocket, um, and it's a challenge I put out there for three years now, which is put me in a vacuum chamber with a space suit. Yeah. yeah. You? Give, give me a spacesuit. Uh, any loan me a spacesuit. I'm not gonna. I don't want it. Give, give loan me a spacesuit from any program. Uh, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Soyuz, all that stuff. It, because no spacesuit in the history of spacesuits has ever failed. You realize that no spacesuit has ever malfunctioned and the astronauts died ever. A little also a little weird. But give me a spacesuit. Remember they're self-contained. Put me in a vacuum chamber and tell me what happens. Tell me, in fact, I have I ask science students this all the time and they cannot answer it. I go, I go, I don't care about oxygen or nitrogen or heating or cooling. I go, what is in that spacesuit that stops a vacuum? What magical technology in that backpack stops a vacuum? It can't. It doesn't exist. It's straight up physics, which is there is and people say, 
they say, well, it's layers. It's like it's got special layers. I go, no, a basketball has layers. A football has layers. You put it in a vacuum chamber, it's going to blow up. It's going to blow up and then finally explode. I go, in fact, there's only one object in the history of soft objects that defies that. And that's the spacesuit. And you say, well, it's classified technology. No, it's not classified technology. It's BS. The early spacesuits that we created, NASA, back in the mid-50s, were made of hard plastic and metal. And they were huge. They were just these bulky, clunky things. And they realized, yeah, these guys aren't going to be able to do anything in these suits. And then somebody came along with a brilliant idea. And they said, you know what? Nobody knows anything about physics. Put them in a soft suit. We'll shoot it. it people will totally buy it. And they did. They totally buy it. People don't know much about you know, getting me included, you know, growing up. Physics, engineering, chemistry, biology. We don't know any of that stuff. And so that's how they got away with it. I mean, again, that photo right there, the, the, the four shadows. Physically, that can't happen. But like most students don't even know it shouldn't happen. That's the part that, th uh, that throws them. Uh, I know that you really don't like Elon Musk. But uh, how do you know you I don't like Elon Musk? Did you read uh, my book? If you if you if you have the opportunity to meet Elon Musk in person, what do you say to him? If I had Elon Musk in a room? Yeah, person. Uh, if, uh, um, if I had a chance to talk to Elon, um, depends yeah. if we were on camera or off camera. Um, on camera, I'd probably just throw him the same sort of questions, you know, like what, you know, the, the Tesla in space, why the car didn't blow up. <laughs> That's the first thing I do. It's like, there's all these pressurized systems and that car was perfect, absolutely perfect. Or why didn't he use the S model or why didn't he put his brand on anything? There was no logos on that car. He, you remember, mm -hmm. it's Tesla and SpaceX. There wasn't a single logo sticker on anywhere on that car. It was like he was trying mm -hmm. to make sure just in case it went wrong. No, privately... I'd ask him what the hell he is doing talking to the press ever because <laughs> he says the most and I know he gets away with it because if you're a billionaire in this world, you all you have to do is say anything and the press reports it, you know, but think of the and, and so I was so happy like when the New York Post ran their story um, last year and it said Elon Musk is a total fraud, right? That was their story and I couldn't have been happier because everything he says never happens. So it's like, oh, I'm going to solve Puerto Rico's power problem with my solar generators. No, I'm going to save those kids in that cave with my mini submarine. No, I'm going to make a super plane to go to China in two hours. No, uh, underground rail system from Los Angeles to San Francisco. No, two people to the moon in 2018. That was my favorite. He's going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to take two people to just do a little nice little tour. We're just going to drive around, you know, just do a tour around the moon. It's like, no. He's never done anything that he's ever, ever, ever set out to do that. He's that he's actually come out and said, OK, here's what you know, like when he says, oh, we're going to do Mars by 2030. No, you're not. No, you're not going to do any of that stuff. So that's what I'd say to him privately. Do you believe it's possible to go to Mars? No. How can you go to Mars? OK, first. The, OK, well, there's two two <laughs> ways we're going to go to this. First is <laughs> that. From a flat Earth standpoint, there is no Mars. It's just a light that's up there. You can't land on it. I mean, it's no different than a planetarium. That's from the yeah. flat Earth standpoint. But even if yeah. it was real, right? Let's say, let's uh -huh. we'll take it out of the, we'll we'll go your route. Let's say Mars is actually there and you can land on it. There is no yeah. technology to get there. It is a one-way trip, even if you could make it. It is literally a one-way trip. There is no there is no physical way you can get there. And I mean, you're basically there, you're going to die there if, if, if that's what you want to do. So no, the Mars missions are ridiculous because, and people say, oh, we'll do, we'll do manufacturing and we'll, we'll make rockets on Mars and we'll, we'll shoot them back. I was like, do you know the manpower it takes just to get a rocket off the pad? The amount of people, the amount of parts, we're talking millions of parts. Uh, anyway. So you don't believe in, in aliens or... Oh, no, I believe in aliens. Extraterrestrial. No, no, I do. I do. I absolutely do. Um, I've watched them. You can go out yourself. I, I was challenged but years ago. But you don't believe in the, 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 the planets. You said you don't believe well, no, in Mars. Exists. No. I, all right. Um, I, I believe. Do I believe there's things flying around up there? Yeah, I do. I've, I've seen them with night vision binoculars. You can watch them any day you want. Get night vision binoculars. Sit and make sure your eyes are adjusted. You will see the sky just crawling with stuff. Absolutely crawling with stuff. And it's not satellites. Um, do I think they're from Mercury and Mars and Venus and Jupiter? No. I th who knows where they're from? I, I personally think they're just old versions of us. 
I think they're in here with us, and which goes into a whole other thing, which is I don't think we're the first, you know, that's not a big secret. We're not the first civilization to rent this apartment. You know, there's other mm. civilizations that have lived here before us. I mean, look at the sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Bimini Road, Puma Punku, goes on the stuff in Iran. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff that's out there. So once I, th I think once a civilization is told to, well, you got to move on, I think they have to go somewhere else, wherever that, you know, maybe it's underground, maybe it's on another continent we haven't seen. But uh, no, we are not. We are not the beginning or the end of this. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about that, uh, another civilization, stuff like that, what, what do you say Some if some crazy people tell to you that believe that have humanoids live in the center of the earth? And what do you say of these people? Wait a minute, say that one more time. So, sorry, re repeat that. Uh, what do you say to the people that said that uh, have humanoids have Oh, the the, jour the journey to the center of the earth thing? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, and believe it or not, what got me into flat earth was the hollow earth theory. That's what I really, really loved. Um, I got into the hollow earth theory, which says that the whole, that it's a sphere and that it's, that's all hollowed out and there's lots of subterranean species living inside. Um, and, and the reason I got into it was because of Admiral Byrd, the, the United States Navy uh, guy that, that did a lot of exploring. He was one of the first guys to, to say that, that, you know, and supposedly that was the rumor that through the North Pole, you could get into this journey to the center of the earth thing. What I think is interesting as I, I looked more and more into it is you don't need the entire earth to be hollow to put civilizations down there you got to remember that like mm. our civilization us 95 percent of our population lives between sea level and one mile up because you know after about seven thousand feet we get altitude sickness so even if you had like a cavern underneath us that was i don't know 10 miles 20 miles high that's way more than enough than you would need for another civilization so do i believe that there's a subterranean civilization sure heck yeah why why not yeah. that's that's the first place i would put them is, is underneath because you could make it very comfortable as a matter of fact if what is above us is some sort of ceiling some sort of projection system who's to say we're not underground at this stage in okay. a much bigger place when you talk about uh, all the missions space missions yeah. and stuff like that uh, i remember by, about the voyager one and uh, the, the 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 object made by men that uh, come outside for the the system solar the solar system you know about the oh yeah voyager. the probes yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, we had voyager the probe, we also, yeah the probe yeah 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 voyager yeah. from the star trek movies um <laughs> <laughs> no no well no 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 i mean that they used voyager they used voyager 7 i think for the uh the first the voyage the probe for nasa not the the the, the star well you not i know probe. i will i yeah. i, I got gotcha. you <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. The probes are just probes. They they just say they sent them out there and they didn't go anywhere. And any images that they broadcast from them are just junk. I mean, the, the one that throws me is the actually the Mars rover. The Mars rover. Oh, my God. And people, again, because people don't know engineering. It's like, look, like a battery. Like, you know full well. Like, when a car battery dies, it's dead. Right. You get to a point like it only lasts like six, what, six years, seven years tops. And then that's it. You have to get rid of it. I mean, there's nothing you can do to recharge it. It is it is gone. There's there's it's unsalvageable. And yet the Mars rover died at one point. It was like, oh, the battery died. And then four years later, for no reason whatsoever, at least four years, it came back to life. And now they're controlling it again. And they're beaming back HD photos. And it's like, wait a minute, you didn't even have HD during the first thing. How are you sending back these images? How are you lining all this stuff up? Again, because people don't understand the... the, the and again, I'm not saying that I'm some sort of weird intellectual. I'm saying that we, in basic school, we forget a lot of the stuff that's put in there. Unless you're in the math club or the physics club or the engineering club. You don't focus on that stuff. You just want to get out of school. And so you can go, you know, get on with your life. And so people don't, they don't understand the engineering. And so when whatever the news tells them and whatever the government tells them, oh yeah, totally this way. No one questions it. Okay. Uh, but what do you say about the different countries that can put a, a, a man in space like China and Russia? Right. And all this 
two countries is the ideological difference have the ideological difference from the United States and the both countries said that the the planet is round the, the planet is right 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 the political yes the political ideologies of these countries are very very different but at the highest level the highest level when it comes to this world you know especially the shape of it and trying to control the people they're all on the same page and by that a very 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 few people at the top so there's six countries with supposed launch capability um china india the, india the europeans the americans russians and the japanese right japanese and so which makes which is kind of strange because israel supposedly crashed a probe on the moon last year and it's like uh wiki says you don't even have launch capability but whatever i'll let that slide no what's interesting is for all these countries they all everyone wants to it's again it's the feather in their cap and it's kind of like mutually assured destruction everybody knows and nobody's gonna rat each other out because they know at the highest level and that is especially the soviet union in the united states and that was like, for example, the, the perfect example was why when the Americans supposedly landed on the moon, remember the Russians were right there. The Rus Russians were going to be there with us. It was just called the space race for a reason. And yet when we got there, the Russians quit. Why? When you say, oh, the Russians were so demoralized that they didn't want to do it. It's like, really? Do you really think the Russians? I mean, come on. Uh, no, it was because the studio techniques were completely different. The Russians could not stage a moon mission and the Americans could not stage a moon mission simultaneously because the production would be completely different. You'd be looking at one, it'd be like two, two different television studios making the same sort of event. It's going to look slightly different and you're going to have inconsistencies. So somebody had to win. Our Hollywood stuff was way better than their stuff. And so, and, and it always has been. And so that's what they went with. China, I mean, come on. China supposedly had a probe on the moon for the last four years. A rover. Like, yeah. Right, right. Where's the photos? Where, why, 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 why are there no photos of this thing? And they put a, a probe in the dark side of the moon. A probe in the dark side of the moon. Really? Because you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go to the American side and kind of tip over the American flag. You wouldn't go to the Sea of Tranquility. That's the only interesting stuff there is the Sea of Tranquility. Come on. Or Japan, J the JAXA missions, when they supposedly circled the moon with HD technology, didn't didn't go over the Sea of Tranquility. It was all super grainy. And when you always look at the Earth, you can't tell what the continents are. The clouds are all but over the place. Do you, do you think uh, I am China and I can't put a probe in the moon? I spend a lot of money to put something in the space. So are you putting in a, a probe only to 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 see the, the American flag? No, I want to see it on other things that they can research. I mean, that's fine, but you know full well that in the brinksmanship of, of uh, the competition of countries, you know full well that they would have an absolute blast taking a rover and running it right through our stuff. You know, running around, it's like, oh yeah, there's the Americans thing there and there's their car and there's their flag. Oops, clink, tip that thing over. They, they would have, they would absolutely have a heads up on us at that stage. They could say, oh, we're the greatest power in the world at that stage, mm -hmm. at that point. And they didn't even try. So hey, it's a small thing. Most, most people don't even know. Most people don't even care. It's like, ah, eh, it's fine. Uh, if, if the, 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 the earth is flat, yeah. how can it explain the sun and the moon are round, uh, curve on a globe? <laughs> Uh, again, I know you're not probably old enough to, uh, do you even have a planetarium down in, um, Brazil, like a building where you can go in and see the stars? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, when you go into the planetarium, you see the moon. I've had arguments with people over this all over the time. It's like, you see the moon. Yep. There it is. Look round. Yep. Can you land on it? Nope. Why not? Well, because it's just a light on the ceiling. There you go. I go, go outside. Well, who's to say that when you walked outside of that building, you're just walking into a much, much bigger building? That's what I'm talking about here. I mean, everything on the sky is just a projection. I mean, look what we've done in the last 20 years ago. We didn't even have HD TV, right? And mm -hmm. so, and what we've got 4K, 8K now, or whatever the ridiculous thing. Imagine if you went another thousand years, what we could do. Or imagine whoever built this place, what they could do. They can do all sorts of fun stuff. The engineering is far beyond this. So putting a, a, a spherical object on the ceiling, pff, come on. Oh, well, you, I know, again, you're not old, for, not old enough to remember, but I'll give you a, a perfect example. When the first HD televisions came out, older people, especially in this country, were just floored of how real things looked. I mean, they would just sit and stare. And it's like, wow, it's like you can almost touch it, right? 
And we're talking about just television, right? But that's how real it was. I mean, to the point where newscasters had to put, you know, had to make sure their makeup was absolutely perfect because it was absolute, you know, the, the resolution was so good. That's all we're talking about here is resolution. Okay. Um, I have a question about the dinosaurs. I want to know if you believe that dinosaurs exist. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, I do believe I'm one of those people that believe they existed. However, I mm. believe the carbon I believe the carbon dating system is absolutely trash. I think carbon that, system the carbon dating system the the the, oh, okay. the, the systems okay, that okay. say how okay, okay. how old things are. Uh, a uh -huh. perfect example here. I'll give you this real fast. I'll dump this in your thing. This is part of my speech actually from last year, and that is here's a perfect example. Oop, come on, come on. We're not frozen, are we? No, good. Okay, so here, take a look at that right there. That's a coelacanth fish, really ugly, multi-fin fish, right? Extinct, se yeah, seventy million years. Yeah. Right, seventy million years, perfect. Right, seventy million years. If you would have gone back, and you know, if you ask any scientist, they would have said at the time that that thing was absolutely dead, absolutely extinct for seventy million years. And then, well, we started finding them swimming out offside of Africa off of Madagascar and Mozambique and South Africa and so on and so on. That's National Geographic swimming with them right there. So when somebody says to me, there aren't any dinosaurs swimming around in Loch Ness, you know, Loch Ness, the Loch Ness monster, yeah, that yeah, whole thing. Yeah. And, and, they, and I say, why, why not? And they go, well, because it's been dead for at least 100 million years. I go, really? Explain this fish. Science evolutionists hate this fish. They do not like dealing with it because it goes against everything that is evolution. It goes everything that is carbon dating. So were there dinosaurs? Yeah, I do think there were dinosaurs. Do I think that all the dinosaurs died off hundreds of millions of years ago? No. Do I think there's still some in the water? Yeah, I do. I absolutely <laughs> do. Because there's fish. I mean, there's there's things that are out there. I th do I, and I think they're in freshwater lakes. I think they're in salt water. I don't think whatever killed the dinosaurs killed them all off. And I don't think they were dead that long. Because if that thing has been around for 70 million years, they would be everywhere. Unless they're perfectly balanced with the ecosystem. Maybe they're only around Africa. I don't know. But it's fascinating. And, and the theory of the Pangea theory. The what? Pangea theory. Oh, the Pangea. The oh, no, I like the Pangea. In fact, the Pangea theory works way better in our model than the other models because in fact here I'll, let me give you this real quick this is every culture by the way that drew the earth before science took over um and i sent this to you i think in uh in the the big zip file i don't know if you got a chance to open mm -hmm. it but the um the pangea theory works way better because remember on a globe the pangea the supercontinent has to be jammed mm -hmm. up on one side of the globe but in the flat earth model all it has to be is jammed in the center it's just a big mass in the center which was way easier to do. By the way, I also thought it was very interesting. If you ever look at the Mer like a Mercator map, a normal, regular flat map, or, you know, a map of, of the world that you see in, in classes, notice real, real quick, and I don't get to say this very often, notice how all the pointy ends point down. They all point in one direction. Well, geologically, that's really tough to do. Why are all that, you know, everything from Norway to the t tip of Florida to the Baja, California, everything points down. Everything points you know, to, to the south, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but yeah. on a flat earth model, they all point out like spokes on a wheel. That makes way more sense. And anyway, it's a little oddity, but I liked it. Okay. Um, uh, I, I, I saw in the that documentary from, from Netflix that you, that asked you about the ed, exploration of the edge of the earth. The exploration beyond the the Antarctica. Right. Do you want to go to the edge of the Earth? To oh, I'd love. I'd what, love to. What 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 you can see beyond of that? Well, if you go beyond the edge, if you can make it to the wall, you know, that's a bigger question. It's like, what's outside of it? What's outside yeah. of this world? You know, yes. if it's if there's walls and a floor and a ceiling, what happens when you get beyond it? And for me. It could be a couple of things, but the, the big two are, do I think we're the only one like this? Or we, are we the only building? No, it's not going to be a one-off. There's probably going to be a whole bunch of them out there. Um, but what do I think, you know, where, you know, like, where do you go when you die? You know, if, if you do get past this, I, do I think this is, there's an unlimited universe, Shambhala, Nirvana, heaven, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I do. Um, and the reason I think that is because this world 
and I've, you know, I'm a little older. I've, I've really stared at it a lot and it seems to be about 99.9% .9 conflict. Meaning it doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how beautiful, how talented you are. There's always something to complain about. Always. You know, if you're, yes. if you're super rich, you're always worried about money. You're beautiful. You're looking in the mirror all the time. Talented. Oh my God. Do I still have talent? And so on and so on. Well, if that's the case, if it's almost inescapable, the conflict here, then what's outside of here, it's got to be the opposite, right? It's got to be a, basically a conflict of free environment. I think it's cyclical. And I think we're here for a reason. I don't think we're here as part of punishment. I don't think we're here as necessarily entertainment. Uh, it feels like school. It feels like a place to learn something. And that's uh, what, I, what I've always felt. You know, we're here to learn perspective. And then after this, we go do something else. Yeah, but what you can see after the edge? What, what, why, what, you can't see any, well, I don't know. No one's been to the edge as far as I can, except for maybe the military. Um, can mm -hmm. can you see beyond it? Like, the, the better question would be, what is the edge? Like, what are, what are the walls made out of? It's like, okay, right. um, uh, heavy element, heavy water, force field, unified field, some sort of electromagnetic thing. I don't know, but whatever it is, it is absolutely impervious to everything we've tried. You know, we basically, the United States and Soviet Union fired atomic weapons at it. And their atomic weapons testing program, not secret information, uh, fired straight up from 1958 up until about 1962. Just new, uh, atomic weapons, boom, 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 boom. Could not bust through it with the, with the best stuff they had at the time. Um, later, I think, you know, they gave up and it's like, okay, did they try with HARP technology? Yeah, maybe. Are they trying now with CERN technology? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's that's the first thing we would do. It's men. And that is, that's ah, a wall. How do we get through it? Get the cannon. You know, we that's what men do. We try to bust through things. Um, and people, it, it, let me give you this real quick. That's, by the way, that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't tell the people. If you're asking, why not tell people? Why not let people know? And and I, I, I said this in the clues, which was the, um, do you have wildlife preserves down there? Excuse me? Wildlife preserves, um, where you put animals... <laughs> dedicated yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah. like a park for animals so wildlife preserve if you took like a thousand acre wildlife preserve and you put a bunch of buffalo in it or whatever mm -hmm. cows you know in your case i don't know whatever you yeah. have down there and yeah they would be perfectly happy they have water they have trees they have grass they don't care why because they're animals right but if you put even a hundred people in this thing they'd only care about one thing they'd care about the wall They'd be like, why is that wall there? Who made the wall? Why are we on this side of the wall? Did we anger the wall people? Maybe we should sacrifice things to the wall. And then they'd start sacrificing things to the wall. And then religion is born uh, based on that. So the way you get around that is you tell people there is no wall. You tell people there is no end. You can't go anywhere. It's a globe. You can just go round and round and round like an ant on an apple. You're not going anywhere. And yeah, okay. that, and it works. Everyone is like, yeah. And so, which is also why people don't go, don't go to Antarctica, the least, least tourism place in the world. Okay. Uh, I have a question about the, the dome. Yeah. Uh, I, I asked you if you want to go to, in a rocket to the space, Yeah. but you believe that is a dome. Yeah, so I think, well, okay, it will. We'll, if if I had a rocket the, the and rocket I went, to, in the dome, the, you have a freight when you come inside the rocket and go to the space, explode in the dome. Oh yeah, if, yeah, you'd crash if you enter in the rocket. Would I would I go on the rocket if I knew it was going to crash? Yeah. Because Re regrettably, that. yes, but that's because you got to remember what I do. I would absolutely martyr myself for the cause. I mean, okay. if, if somebody said, okay. because that's what everyone would expect, expect anyway. It's like, if you actually put me in a rocket, it's like, okay, well, that's going to be the end of me. But, it, but everyone would see, it. it's like, oh, look, you know, this flat earther died in the rocket crash. And they'd be like, huh, why'd he die in the rocket crash? You're and, a martyr. Yeah. So I'd be a martyr. So that's fine. I'd do it. I, it, it <laughs> I'm not kidding when I said, I absolutely would do it. He's like, why not? I mean, if I was 25, eh, maybe not, but I'm, I'm older. So how old are you? How I am. You? I am now fifty-two. Fifty-two. Yeah. Are you in Seattle now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm in Seattle, Washington. Um, I have another question. Yes. Do you believe in, in horoscope in the the horoscopes? Horoscopy. Horoscopy. Hor I don't know the, the uh, Let Let me put here. Hor horoscope. The zodiac. 
Yeah, the zodiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <sighs> because you said you said you don't believe in the the, the planets. The planets are just like oh, oh, oh. So... Well, I believe. Well, no, that's also that's an interesting point, by the way. Do I believe in the you know? Are there zodiac constellations? Of course, you know, we connect the dots and we turn them into whatever we want. What I think is interesting about that is that the zodiac has not changed in thousands of years. And you say, well, why would it change? Well, it's like, well, because of parallax. You got to remember that we're supposedly, you know, the, the forget about the Earth flying around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour. The solar system supposedly is flying sideways at half a million miles an hour. And the, the galaxy is supposedly going at 2 million miles an hour. Well, that's a problem because remember, some stars are five years light years away and some are a thousand light years away. Well, no different than if you're driving down a road, right? The, the telephone poles go pretty quick, but the mountains in the distance go really slow. We never, ever see that ever, ever with the stars. And, and I know scientists come back as well. Well, they're so far away. There's so much distance. You'd never, ever see the, 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 you know, the, the, the shift. It's like, really? Because 2000 years is a long time to be traveling that speed. And you can't tell me we, we wouldn't see some of the shifts. So do I believe, do I, you know, understand the Zodiac? The Zodiac for me is just a clock. That's all it is. It's a giant clock system. Um, but it also helps us in, in our case. The, the Zodiac can influence our lives, our Oh, do I, th do I think it actually can influence? Maybe. I mean, I've spent time with people that were really, really into it. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it does, but I don't think we. I don't think they've got it perfected. I, I've I've had like mine. I don't know if you had a full reading done where it's like twenty pages, you know, not just what you read in the newspaper, but like twenty pages on you know what time you were born and what day and all that. Um, there's some interesting stuff that I that I I you know I, there might be some credibility there, um, mm -hmm. but not. I, I'm kind of hit or miss on that one. And uh. Uh, two more questions to finish. Okay. The, the question is, when you defend the flat earth, uh, are you afraid that another people can, uh, to encourage other people against things that good, like vaccines or the, oh, our, our oh, you mean this, say this that will COVID-19 is a little cold or deny the global warming? Do you <sighs> think this... Well... All right. You're encouraging just like these people like that. Yeah, that's well, that's a tricky question because, yeah, if you get into flat earth, because flat earth is one of the biggest things you could ever get into. And once you get into that, yeah, you are suspicious of pretty much everything. And, and you, this is a problem, you don't? Well, there's an old saying, which is trust everyone, but count your change. Meaning mm. if you trust everyone in blindly, you know, blind faith then or blind trust people tend to take advantage of you and come on we all we all know there's deception out there in business and politics and sports and entertainment and even journalism and science so when like for example the the vaccine let, let, let's touch on that real quickly do i think that people should get vaccines sure i do but i also know that if there's a pro i also know corporations and if a if a corporation runs into a product problem and, and we, we've seen this in movies and it's very quotable, which is they look at the bottom line and that is if the class action lawsuit is less than the recall, price of the recall, recalling the product, they don't do mm -hmm. the recall. You know, kind of get mm -hmm. what I'm saying there? You, you, yeah. you, you will pay people off to shut up. You, you know, class action, you settle out of court, you make them sign the non-disclosure and you say, you can't talk about that our product killed your son. And so, I mean, We've seen this with products over the years. So when a vaccine comes out, and uh, in fact, I talked about this, in, in, or I'm going to talk about this in a rant next week, but real briefly, if you make a vaccine and for some reason the autism rate, autism rate in our country, the United States, I can't speak for you guys, goes from one in 10,000 to one in 40, you got to give people an answer. You've got to give them something because if it's not air or food or water which are all very regional and impossible you know it couldn't be any of those three then you got to give them something you have to give them something you can't just say well it's not the mmr it can't be and and you say well, and it's okay what is it it's like don't know you can't say that you've got them the mob will want something in that case um and when it comes to the the pandemic <laughs> that's been out yeah. there I, I will tell you the same thing i tell everybody 
um, because look, I've seen it. There, there's a reason why, you know, especially in America, we're going back to work, we're just going back. Why? Because nobody's scared. Not really. Why? Um, look at, I, and I'm not going to have you do it, but think about everyone on your contact list. Is anyone on there dead? No. You don't believe anybody that? No, no, no. On your contact list. Uh, on your uh, phone. In Brazil, how many, how many people that? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> on your phone, you have a contact contact list on your phone. Yeah. Is there anybody anybody there on that list dead from the virus? From me, no. I, I if I, well, if well, I, that's I just, know anybody, that that's just it though. I've talked to so many people, and they've all said, "Nope, don't know anybody. Don't know." I call it. I, I don't. I, I don't want to drag this out, but I'll give you the example. Um, it's what I call the the no zombie effect. You know what zombies are, right? Yeah. So the news could come out tomorrow and they'd say, oh, yeah, by the way, zombies are everywhere. There's zombies here. There's zombies there. Zombies are really scary. Don't go outside. Well, the problem is you can only run that so long because eventually you've got to have zombies. P people have got to actually see zombies because if they don't see them, they're not going to be scared. So you have all these towns all over this, at least our country, they're saying, hey, you ever see a zombie? Nope. Didn't see a zombie. I've heard there's zombies. Nope. No zombies. And people just going out. They don't care because nothing's hitting home. If the, if it's a truly a pandemic, and I don't want to get into the semantics too much, but it's truly a pandemic. Remember, they said in the initially that it was like a 1% mortality rate. One in every 100 people, right? Mm -hmm. One in every 100 people. That's at least three and a half million Americans. And we're six months in and we barely broke 100,000. Three and a half million to 100,000? Sorry. It's not enough. It's not enough. A pandemic has to be bigger than that. And so just because you go on the news and you say, everyone must wear a mask and do all this social distancing crap. I'm sorry, everything kills more than, than the virus does. So no, uh, there's, plus you're having people go out of work. And if yes, you can say <coughs> jobs versus, versus lives, God, jobs every time. Sorry. Mm. I, I mean, you okay. may disagree, but look, in this country, the economy is everything. Uh, so you don't know anybody that died from COVID-19? I don't even know anyone that had it. Yeah. Not, not that died, but, but nobody but, even had but, it. But COVID-19 starts in Washington State, you know. Yeah, I know. I know, supposedly. Yeah. But but there's too many inconsistencies. For, for example, I, I don't want to drag this out, but like, for example, the um, none of the airports in the United States closed at any stage. <laughs> and everybody knows that if it's a contagious virus, you don't get into an airplane. Once you get in an airplane, remember that's a pressurized cabin, right? It would spread everywhere. I mean, you you wouldn't, the bathrooms alone would be horrible, right? And yet mm -hmm. it, no, at no point did the airports get shut down. Why not? That's the first thing you would do is shut down the airports. It just didn't make any damn sense. That and of course the, um, uh, the, the mortality rate was just too low. You can't say, oh, it's 2%, it's 1%, it's half percent, it's a 10%. You know what? We don't know. But it's still super, super dangerous. Again, it, it doesn't scare... The only way to scare people is if they know somebody that... You know, why you saw so many young people outside? It's because they don't know somebody that died. If they knew somebody that died, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be protesting in the streets about anything. They'd be home. And they didn't. Sorry, it just it wasn't scary enough to do it. It was, I mean, again, I, I don't care what the news said. You have to show people, you know, overwhelmed hospitals. We were firing people in, in hospitals because nobody was going to hospitals. There were no overwhelmed hospitals. Okay. Sorry. Are you, are you saying that, but uh, until you see somebody from your family or relative? Anybody, any, somebody, from... like th there was a guy that said it better than I did. And he said, if it was an actual pandemic, you would know dead people. Your dental hygienist, the guy that works at the gas station, somebody, you know, your, your nephew, some, but you would know people that died. One in a hundred is a huge amount of people. One in a hundred means you know people that are dead. And that's mm -hmm. not the case. It's not even one in a thousand. So, okay. so sorry. I mean, it's just not, again, the news pushed it really, really hard, but there was nothing to back it up. I mean, there were towns and states and media. There were some towns in our country that didn't even do anything different. They, they're just like, yeah, screw it. <laughs> Cause it, it's not, it wasn't heavy enough. The Spanish flu, which they were trying to compare it to killed 1% of the world, the whole world. Mm -hmm. And it ripped mm -hmm. through really, really quickly. I mean, we're, it's June. <laughs> It doesn't take that long. The difference between the Spanish flu and now is airplanes. In Spanish flu, there were no airplanes. It was 1918. Nobody flew. There were ships and trains. There weren't even highways. 
so and we're in fact barely even people had cars and it still ripped through pretty quickly with airplanes the whole world two weeks everybody's infected in two weeks that's how it works every model we've run since 1970 does not does not happen sorry with nobody nobody in the flyer community believes in the virus nobody in the community believes in vaccines if to your question um they they they're only global warming the what global warming uh they're kind of mixed on that because like for example well for me it's tricky because global warming means something different for us because it's physical so like people have asked me do i believe in global warming yeah i do but remember it makes more sense in our model because if it's an enclosed if it's in a building does it make more sense remember remember the term greenhouse gases Mm -hmm. well it doesn't make more sense if it's an actual greenhouse which is a whole nother thing which is when like perfect example when gases get to a certain a certain height why don't they go off into space right why do they stay mm-hmm. there and you're going to say gravity and i go okay fine here's an experiment really quick the second floor of your building whatever will make it a vac- vacuum chamber right you put a valve right above you you pop that valve what happens you know full well what happens it's instant it's violent it's not like the movies it equalizes instantly the question is why didn't gravity keep the air in your room instead of going upstairs and you say, well, because the vacuum's stronger. I go, yeah. So when you go outside, why is the atmosphere still still there? Why? And you say, well, your, your initial knee-jerk reaction is be like, oh, because of gravity. And I'll say, you mean the same gravity that couldn't hold the air in your room? Remember, like you take a soda, right? And you um, you suck a you know soda out of a, a glass with a straw, right? Well, mm-hmm. why didn't the gravity keep the soda in the in the glass? Well, it's because the vacuum force you created was more. And mm-hmm. no scientist, I've yet to find a scientist, I say, where does our atmosphere end and space begin? No one can say it. So yeah, well, climate climate change, I absolutely believe in it. And I think it only happens because we're in a building, because we're in a, in a structure. I think the, okay. air, the whole point about air pressure is that there's something pressing against it. You know, it's, it's air pressure. You're in a sealed container. That's the only way it works. Okay. My last question. Yeah. It's about the jokes. How do you deal with the jokes? The people that mock the people that mock yeah. flat earth. Um, yeah. It depends. If it happens during an interview, I'm pretty lighthearted about it because I know that's, you know, like if I'm doing a show, you know, my, I know that the, the host has to, you know, they're looking for, you know, a sound bite, uh, some sort of clip that they can use. Um, privately, there's a couple things I don't do. Like one, I rarely look at the YouTube comments <laughs> at all. Mm-hmm. It's just bad. The YouTube comments are this this tip works for everything. Don't read read the comment. Text, yeah, the oh, yeah. Don't read the you. comments. I mean, the the, the but, but this tip this tip works for everything. Yeah, yeah. Don't read the comments. Not, don't not... don't do it. I I I, <laughs> think I had a chance to watch the uh, the latest Wreck It Ralph movie. And there was a sad moment in it where he goes in and and read because it was Ralph breaks the internet. He goes into the comment section, and he goes in there, and they don't even show the comments. He's just looking around, and he got so sad because yeah, I mean it'll it'll absolutely wear on you. I've had people that that have shut down the YouTube channels because they just can't they can't hack it. Um, mm-hmm. But most of the time, I just ignore it. Um, but here's the here's the big thing, and that is. And people say, why don't you get mad when people tell jokes? Why don't you get mad when people mock you? And I say, how can I? Because I used to be them. I used to be on the other side of that fence. It would be hypocritical for me to get mad at somebody that's coming at me because I absolutely, those arguments they're, they're throwing at me, I had those arguments. And so for me to say, oh, you're a jerk, you're a moron, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't do any good. You know, I, I'm going to try to tell them, it's like, yeah. I get it. I know why you're upset. I, I absolutely get it. I mean, I, in fact, I was more stubborn than the average person. The average person, when they go through this, takes about two weeks to, to decide one way or the other because there's so much content out there that they can look at. When I was looking at it, it took me nine months. And at, after only after nine months of banging my head on the keyboard um, because it's 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 tough. People the, There's a Mark Twain quote, uh, which is people would rather... It's, it's easier to fool someone than to convince them that they were fooled. Meaning people don't like to know that they were tricked. They don't like it. And it's like, because it makes them feel stupid. And so they'd rather stick to their guns and say, no, 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 I'm right about this. I'm right. I, you know, and I don't blame them. I absolutely don't blame them. 
Okay. Um, do you have a political party or you follow any ideology, political ideology? I don't. Most of the flat, I, there, there's flat earthers that are both Republican and Democrat here. I, I don't I don't vote federally because I think it's a rigged game. <laughs> Again, another conspiracy. I think it's I think it's decided way before at the federal level. I think it's a rigged game. The um, uh, you don't vote. I don't. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. There's, I mean, because again, if when it comes to political parties, especially when you go way up there, it's about money. I'll give you a perfect example, real quick, which is okay, let's say you're a billionaire, right? You have a mm -hmm. billion dollars. And I don't know if you have Democratic and Republican, what your things are, but let's say you're in the United States. Who do you give your money to? And you say, well, that's a tough question. It depends on my environmental stance, my business stance, blah, blah, blah. I might give a million dollars to the Democrats and I might give you a million dollars to the Republicans. It's like, no. You're going to give your money to both of them. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they don't care that you, it's not like they don't care who you wrote the checks to as long as you wrote a check to them. Yeah. And so, and say, okay, what's your point? My point is if I write a million dollars to the Republican party, let's just say Republicans, what does that get me? Well, it absolutely will give me a dinner with the president. Absolutely. And if I donate $10 million, I will even have meetings with him now or his staff mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever group is, is tied to it. Meaning I have a chance, a chance at influencing policy, but it's going to cost me a lot of money. Yeah. What does the average person have? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and, and, and look, elections can be rigged. And so, and I know that sounds cynical and it sounds jaded, but I'm sorry. It's like, look, it, unless you may, it, you know, the puppet masters control at the, at the highest level and voting at the federal level is just an illusion of choice. Plain, <laughs> plain and simple. Um, however, just, just to get the point across, there are just about every religious group and every political party every is tied to flat earth in some way, shape or form with the exception of atheists. Atheists have a really, really, really tough time. It's very tough to be an atheist in flat earth just because, you know, if it was built and then it was built by someone, but you know, atheists don't like thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Okay. Can, that's it. That's it. That's all you got. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you get the, so, um, did you get the, uh, you got the zip file that I sent you? You sent by email? I sent a link that was, uh, that included those three photographs of me. If, yeah. If you want. I, I, I got with, with your three of your, three pictures of you. Okay. Did you, did, there's a link there though to, uh, yeah. we transfer. Yeah. That's, I, I saw the, the link with, we, we transfer. Yeah. That's a full, that's a full zip file of just a whole ton of flat earth images. Okay, I, I will da download this zip file now. Okay, cool. Um, if there's anything else you need from me, let me know. Otherwise, okay. it was a pleasure. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know, again, if you need me or anything else, just feel free to reach out. Thank you very much for your attention for this interview. Yeah, happy to, happy to do it. And uh, maybe we'll talk again. And uh, even you don't believe me, keep safe and don't get COVID-19 <coughs> because it's tough, okay? What was that? It's not easy. I'm sorry. Keep safe. Okay. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye. I'd see ya.